this is Brandon at Upscale Detail and uh, here early. This is six o'clock. We've got a busy day ahead today. We've got a uh, brand new Range Rover Velar. We have a Nissan Altima and we've got a detail on a motorcycle, which is always pretty interesting. Um, start my day pretty early and, and come in to the office and, and get things done like payroll and scheduling and follow up with customers and stuff like that. And I just wanted to take a minute and just talk a little bit about, you know, how to start a business. If, if you're looking to start a business like this or even, you know, any service based business, uh, you know, pretty much the you know, same type of setup. Um, so I, I would say first, you know, look at what you're trying to do. Um, look at the prices that, you know, your services cost and the demographics of the area that you're trying to go into. You know, for example, my shop here wouldn't work in an area that was a low income demographic because of the prices and the, and the work that we provide and, you know, the types of vehicles that we like to work on and in a low income demographic, it just wouldn't work. So in Vero, you know, specifically close to the beach, we're in a good spot for what we're doing. And that was very strategic when we found our location. So when you have good location, good demographic, you know, the next thing that kind of comes is finding a space. And I always say start small, but have options. So with our space, we started with a small bay. I think it was 2,600 feet or so square feet. Um, went a little bigger than I needed to at first because I was, you know, stubborn and I wanted a nice office. So the office I'm in upstairs right now is an office that came with the initial building and you know it, it overextended me for a bit I think if I had to go back and, and redo it I would probably have just picked a bay and had a little you know a nice area for customers to to be rung out and hang out in but you know we went a little bit bigger and you know I, I kind of planned month to month and had a schedule of things I wanted to accomplish so you know, first month I was like, all right, okay, let's, let's get paint on the walls. Let's get cosmetics done. Really look the look when I, when a client walks in and wants their car done that way, you know, it, it had the biggest impact without taking the most money out of my wallet because I really couldn't afford to, you know, do everything I wanted to do at once, considering I didn't have any help money wise, no, you know, financing, stuff like that. So pick the space picked 30 days, got it painted up. And, you know, the next thing you do is, all right, I've got this bay I have, it's painted, it looks awesome. Find a vendor that you can get products from. In one of our previous videos, you guys met Chris and Chris came along, actually funny story, while I was painting the shop. You know, I'm here on my hands and knees and paintbrush and, 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 and paint can and, you know, the guy comes in and offers to help me out and, you know, we hit it off and I've been buying stuff from him ever since. You know, we, you can go on Amazon, you can go online and, and buy things probably a little bit cheaper, but, you know, Amazon doesn't bring you a, a, you know, a bag full of freshly baked Christmas cookies every year. Amazon, you can't call them in the middle of the night and say, hey, I'm in a pinch, I need something first thing in the morning for a client. A guy like Chris, he's got you covered. So establish your space, establish your demographic, you know, find vendors, find a product source. That vendor is also going to kind of put your ears to the ground in the, in the community of people that own similar businesses. And, you know, and you can ask them if you're on the right track with stuff. And I did, I, I, I oftentimes would go and say, Hey man, like, I'm charging this for this. How close am I? Like, you know, what do I need to do? What do you suggest I do different? And me being me, I was, I was really trying intentionally not to be anything like the other people around. So when he was like, Oh, you're like double the price, but it looks like your works double the, the quality. And that, you know, that's exactly what I wanted. That's what drove me. And that's where I wanted to be. So getting the vendors established. So now you've got product, you've got a space. Equipment is a big one, um, but you know, a lot of equipment has comfort associated with it. Like a lot of the polishers and stuff are there. You can go buy one at Harbor Freight and yeah, your wrist is going to feel like it's fallen off at the end of the day, but you can get a car done 
So we, you know, went to Harbor Freight, got polishers, started off really inexpensive, really cheap, and you know, went from there and built the base. And my goal was, hey, okay, in 60 days, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this and buy better equipment. So then then came in better equipment and our organic growth from what the business was taking in paid for that equipment. There was no like maxing out credit cards, no going crazy with anything. Really my, my goal was to, the business had to pay for the stuff no matter what. So even if I had it in savings, even if I, I, I you know, figured I could cover it, my, my thing was that if the business can't buy it, then I shouldn't either. So bought the equipment that I needed, you know, over time. And then it's time to start marketing. So if you've got a location, it's painted up, looking right. You've got a couple clients just, you know, walk in business, some word of mouth. Hey, this guy just opened a shop. Let's go feel him out. It's like a new restaurant. You can open up the crappiest restaurant in the world, but the week you open, everybody in town is going to come check you out. But you won't sustain that unless you market. So with marketing, my my strength and my you know um my best value for money with marketing was social media because i knew it you know i had been exposed to it in previous roles and, and stuff like that and i knew that i could specifically target exactly who the client was that i was looking for without you know spending a ton of money um there's a local magazine here that only prints publicate or, or newspaper that only prints and sends to these wealthy neighborhoods on the beach and I called them and they wanted I think it was eight or nine hundred dollars a week to advertise and although it sounded great I felt like I was you know targeting the the right people I didn't have eight hundred dollars a week to spend on print ads so what I did was I, I I started making Facebook ads I went on YouTube Google you know hey effective Facebook ads car detailing Sure enough, there's a guy on there who's saying, here's the keywords we think you should use. Here's the stuff we, you type into to Facebook in the marketplace, you know, or, or not marketplace, but in the ad center to kind of, um, you know, increase the amount of views you'll get on these ads and also increase the quality of the leads that you get off of the ads. So did that first day, pretty much crickets. I mean, nothing, I was like, okay i just wasted some money second day I, I got a message and i realized that the person you know they were knowledgeable about the product because of the keywords that i had used they kind of because they were knowledgeable about the product they kind of expected the pricing to be where it was and they had a nice car you know good income things like that and all that stuff had already been worked out for me behind the scenes through facebook and the ads and the keywords that i chose it makes it really easy to, I don't want to say close that person because it makes me sound too salesman -y. Um, But if you own a business and you're not a salesperson, then I, I think you need to kind of reevaluate why you're in business. So it, it just really, it helped me close that person. And it helped me drive home the value that we were offering to the, to the client because they had already kind of on their own researched and landed on the product. They landed on the product first and then they landed on the shop. So with marketing, eventually you start spending more and more money. The ads kind of get optimized based on the feedback that you provide Facebook, you know, or whatever social media platform you're using. And don't be afraid to go on and say, hey, Facebook, I need to talk to somebody. I'm having trouble. And believe it or not, if I go online right now, there is someone at Facebook that I can talk to about ads. Facebook is not a free platform. They're not there to be, uh, you know, social people. It's a business and they make money off of ads and you're their customer now because you're putting up ads. So they're there for you. They want, they want you to succeed. And if the ad's not working, talking to them, they might not say they can help results you know, without, with just a phone call saying that you want to see some stuff different, but I guarantee you, if you call them, they will send you more leads, which is a really beneficial thing. Um, to the point at which to this day, I think I call them maybe once a week and just talk to them about our ads, what they're doing, 
you know, what my expectations are and, you know, what can they do to enhance that experience for the client and also make it easier to close a sale on our end. So a little bit about the Facebook. Uh, I think Facebook is the only paid advertising that we currently do. Um, Facebook is cross-platform with Instagram. Um, Instagram, I don't think, has ever gotten me anywhere as far as paid clients. Actually, I think I've gotten one. Um, I remember this one because he has a really interesting uh, screen name. And Instagram's gotten me nowhere, but Instagram is cool for like other people in the same business. So I find that more other detail shops follow me on Instagram than on Facebook. So like Facebook's for clients, Instagram's for industry people. I like both because if a customer has, or if another detail shop has a customer two hours south of us and they remember upscale details and Vero, they're gonna send the customer that's not close to them to us because they've heard of us, they've seen pictures, they know we do good work. And you start building that kind of stuff. And you build reputations with other shops as a good shop in, in the area and, and, and those referrals pay off. And then it works both ways. You know, make sure if you have a client who's closer to them and, and you, you throw them a bone once in a while. And, and that, you know, that's a hell of a lot cheaper than uh, paying Facebook. For, for leads, right? So Facebook got to the point where it was so successful for us that I hired a marketing agency, a local marketing agency. It's actually a guy, um, his name is Chris. Uh, he came in as a customer first. And that's really something that's, that's important to me. So a lot, we get every day, some salesmen from some life insurance, marketing, direct mail, whatever comes in suit and tie business card in hand and i'm like I, I i don't know i'll have to ask the owner i don't know where he is you know because I, I just don't like the the coldness of it you know chris came in customer first stoked about what we did you know, didn't even try to pitch me i had to ask him i'm like hey what do you do and he's like i'm a marketing guy you know i my wife and i own this marketing business and we specialize in social media i'm like cool me too I don't need somebody. I thought I knew it all. It's like, I don't need somebody, but like, let's, let's sit down. Let me, let me have a, a chat with you and see what you guys can do because I wanted to give him that respect because he was our client first. And Chris set up a demo for me and I noticed that a lot of the stuff that was taking up my time. So I'd go home and I'd be typing up messages and going crazy. A lot of the stuff that was taking up my time were things that Chris could do um through like animation and and remotely so chris has the ability to set up messenger marketing which you know if i type in i'm interested in a coding it's going to fire back and say okay what's the year make and model of your car so now i'm getting by the time i get involved in the messenger conversation on facebook it's someone who's already had all their stuff laid out and they're basically pre-qualified through the ad and through targeting and then further pre-qualified through them explaining what they have and what they're wanting done. So Chris saved me probably 20 to 30 hours a week just in organizing the Facebook ads, responding to people that are commenting and automating the process, but still keeping it personal enough to where people don't feel like they're getting the runaround. So, and another thing, like Chris is great and I can call him any time of the day and be like, hey man, like this automation stuff's driving me nuts. You know, figure something out to make it a little bit less robotic because I'm really big on, like the business's number is my cell phone number. So I'm really big on people having access to the owner and having access to basically the decision maker. So, you know, I was like, okay, Chris, I don't want people to feel like I'm just putting them in some type of a sales funnel and just filling out these autofill forms to go to nowhere. So let's make it more personal and he can redesign the entire menu. So Chris has edited our ad probably hundreds of times and he is awesome when it comes to feedback and also keeping us in line too. Cause like I said, you know, when I, before I started with him, I kind of thought I knew it all. And I feel like I still have periods in which I think I know it all. And I'll say, Hey, I think we need to kill this. And he'll push back on me and say, no, let's give it another try. Let's give it 30 days. And nine times out of 10, it works out. 
So it's good to have that person to hold you accountable to the growth and the ads and well, everything that's going on in, in the business because his business is social media and my business is, is detailing. So I, I can't know both of them perfectly. And, and Chris really fills that gap where I have someone who's dedicated to the social media, dedicated to optimizing the leads that come in and making sure that they're pre-qualified. So I know this is already a really long video uh, and I'm rambling on, but location, demographic, you know, demographic study, location, marketing, equipment, tools, chemicals, you know, vendors, all that stuff will get you, will get you running. Um, there's, there's other like legal stuff, you know, like starting an LLC, registering for business with the, the local, uh, municipalities and, and counties and things like that. But, um, I can actually cover all that stuff on a different video, but you really got to make sure that all of those other things can be done before you, you, you get serious into this because upscale wouldn't work everywhere, you know, and, and although anybody can do what I do, upscale would not succeed in a place that didn't have an income to support it. So I think it's really important to do your homework. Um, you know, everybody wants to own a business, but not everybody has the drive and determination to see it through. You know, people have the fight or flight response where you get to a point where business isn't doing great. And if something doesn't happen to kind of spark it, people are really apt to walk away and, and to not see it through. And there's been times and days that I thought this place wasn't going to work or, or this place wasn't, you know, going to make it or, you know, hey, I, I think you know, I have no appointments on the schedule next week and it's already Thursday and I have three guys waiting on me for, for jobs. And, and, you know, I just, you have to put your head down sometimes and trust that your homework is going to pay off. And nine times out of 10, it does, you know, were there days that I had to jump in my truck and, and drive to a dealership and talk to people I really didn't want to talk to, to try to get some business. Absolutely. But that, you know, grassroots type stuff, pound and pavement is, is, is how you get stuff in the door when you're in growth mode. So, you know, location, demo, vendors, tools, all that stuff, and do your homework. Um, I'm going to keep doing some videos where we just kind of talk in the office and I give you my honest feedback and, and how I feel about starting a business from scratch and, and getting to the level that we're at. And uh, I hope you guys really enjoy it little bit of a different video today so if you have any questions comments concerns would like to see something in the future you're trying to open a business have any questions give me a call um, shoot me a text go to our Facebook page the business number is my cell phone number so don't be afraid to uh, reach out all right guys have a great day don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel